turns out understanding the spins, understanding that wave functions have spin, is what's going to be uh, what is going to allow us to understand why two electrons can't occupy, uh, no more than two electrons can occupy the same s orbital at, at one time. So remember, when we include spin, our wave function includes not only a spatial component, but also a spin component. And there's one more feature we have to understand about wave functions of electrons, and that is uh, electrons, um, because they are a type of particle that physicists call fermions, meaning specifically the fact that the electron has a spin one half as opposed to a different value of the spin. Particles with spin one half are uh, called fermions, and all fermions, and uh, specifically for our case, uh, electrons have the property that they're anti-symmetric with respect to electron exchange. So I'll explain what that means. But it's a very important property of electrons that we need to understand to understand how their wave functions behave. So uh, anti-symmetric, uh, when we talk about symmetry of functions, often we're talking about a symmetry about the x-axis or uh, symmetry about the z-axis or something like that. So this type of symmetry is a little bit different. Um, what I mean here is if I have some multi-electron wave function, let's say some function of electron coordinates for electron number one and electron number two, when I am talking about symmetry with respect to electron exchange, what I mean is exchange the identity of the two electrons. Stop calling electron number one, number one, and electron number two, number two, and, and call them by different names, and ask yourself if the wave function is any different. So in particular, let's say, let's define this operator, the permutation operator, or the exchange operator, where if I apply this operator P12 to the wave function Psi12, what I'll get is just the result of inverting the, the names of those two variables. So that's a little bit counterintuitive. So let's make sure we understand with a couple of uh, simpler examples that don't involve quantum mechanics. Um, let's say we have a function x squared plus y squared. If I take that function and I exchange the identities of variables x and y, so I just rename x to y and y to x, then the x becomes y and the y becomes x, and my new function becomes y squared plus x squared. So again, all I've done is I've exchanged the two variables as indicated by my exchange operator. So algebraically, x squared plus y squared, y squared plus x squared are exactly the same thing, so this function is symmetric. So the function x squared plus y squared is symmetric with respect to exchange of the x and y variables. On the other hand, if I have the function x squared minus y squared, and I exchange those two variables, if I exchange the, the meaning of x and y, when y becomes x and x becomes y, again, just renaming the variables, leave them in the same position, just call them by different names, x squared becomes y squared, the minus sign stays where it is, y squared becomes x squared. What I have here as a result of the exchange is that x squared minus y squared becomes y squared minus x squared, which is the negative of the original function. Uh, so that function, we say, is anti-symmetric with respect to exchange. Functions don't have to be either symmetric or anti-symmetric. Uh, if I take the function x squared, uh, let's say, plus y cubed, and I exchange the x and the y, I'll get y squared plus x cubed. So this function has nothing to do with this function. It's not the same. It's not the opposite. It just is a totally different function. The x in this quantity is cubed. Over here, it's only squared. So those are entirely different functions. Uh, and, and I would say this function has no symmetry. It's non-symmetric with respect to exchange of the x and y variables. So those are just a few examples to give us an idea of, of what this exchange idea means and what it means to be symmetric or anti-symmetric 
with respect to exchange of uh, two variables. So back to quantum mechanics, what must be true, what the universe tells us is true about the wave functions that electrons have is that any electron has a wave function which is anti-symmetric with respect to exchange of the electrons. So since it's anti-symmetric, if I exchange uh, variables one and two, I must get back a function that is the negative of the function I started with. So we can ask ourselves what that means about functions like our uh, hypothetical helium wave function. If we write our helium wave function as a product of a 1s electron for uh, electron 1 and a 1s electron for electron 2, keeping in mind that I have a spatial and a spin component, if I write my function as, let's say, um, a psi 1s for R1 and then a spin up function for electron 1 multiplied by psi 1s for electron 2 and then spin down or beta for the spin component of electron 2. That's the wave function we've considered so far. It's a product of a spin up 1s electron and a spin down 1s electron. That's what we uh, think of when we say electron is a 1s2 electron configuration. That's going to get a little bit unwieldy, so let me write this instead as in a shorthand notation. I'll just say um, a 1s function for electron 1 and alpha for electron 1, dropping some of the notation, and then 1s for electron 2, beta for electron 2. So that's what we've uh, considered as our wave function. If I exchange the 1 and 2 variables in this function, so again, just swapping the identity of the two variables. So everywhere I've written a 1, I'll write a 2 instead. So instead of 1s spin up for electron 1, 1s spin down for electron 2, I've got 1s spin up for electron 2. That variable has been renamed 1s and spin down for electron 1. That's the result of the exchange operation. Quantum mechanics tells us this function has to be the negative of the function I started with, and it's definitely not. It's not the negative of the function I started with. It's not even the same as the function I started with. Electron 1 is now in the 1s beta configuration, not 1s alpha. So it's not the same function as I had before. So what that means is this is not a valid wave function. Uh, even though we've been writing it down, it doesn't turn out it, it solves Schrodinger's equation, or it comes close to solving Schrodinger's equation. Um, but it doesn't obey this anti-symmetry that the universe insists we must have. So it turns out the way to address that problem, a better wave function for the helium atom would be something that looked like 1s uh, alpha for electron 1, 1s beta for electron 2. And now I've, I've collapsed the notation even more. So instead of writing 1s1 alpha 1, I'm just writing 1s alpha uh, for electron 1. 1s beta for electron 2. If I then subtract uh, 1s beta for electron 1, 1s alpha for electron 2. So I've written my original wave function, spin up 1s for electron 1, spin down 1s for electron 2. I've subtracted the opposite, where the, the two electrons have, uh, electron 1 is now spin down and electron 2 is now spin up. Turns out when I write the function that way, if I exchange the two electrons, so again, just rewriting everything that used to have a 1 is now a 2. So I've got 1s alpha for electron 2, 1s beta for electron 1, minus 1s beta for electron 2, 1s alpha for electron 1. After doing this, it turns out that my new wave function, this term that looks like 1s alpha 2, 1s beta 1, is exactly the negative of a term in the original expression. And this term, term which looks like negative 1s beta 2, 1s alpha 1, is exactly the negative of this positive term, 1s alpha 1, 1s beta 2, from the original function. So what we have is that my exchanged wave function is indeed the negative of the function that I started with. So 
by writing down the wave function in this uh, new way, I've managed to write a function that is, in fact, anti-symmetric with respect to electron exchange. So this function that I've written here We say that that wave function is an anti-symmetrized wave function. If what I really want is just to have one electron that's spin up, one that's spin down in the same wave function, it turns out that's illegal the way I've just said it. But if I make this anti-symmetrized combination, take the thing that I want and subtract uh, the, the version of it with the electrons exchanged, then I've successfully anti-symmetrized the wave function so that when I take uh, the exchange of the two electrons, I get back the negative of what I started with. Uh, just for completeness, I could also write a, a symmetrized, not an anti-symmetrized, but a, a, a symmetrized combination would be the same thing with a plus sign. So uh, if I took 1s alpha 1, 1s beta 2, and then a plus sign, 1s beta 1, 1s alpha 2, that's a wave function by including the plus here rather than a minus sign. That's a wave function that will be symmetric with respect to electron exchange in cases where I might want to do that. Um, so, but the, the main result we have so far is that when we say, even if we loosely say, our wave function for the helium is a 1s2, meaning spin up and spin down electrons both in the 1s orbital, what we really mean by that is to obey quantum mechanics, we have to have this anti symmetrized combination. So this is the best version of the helium wave function that we've obtained so far. There's one additional complication, which is um, that if uh, even though this wave function was normalized, this one is no longer normalized. So that's an additional complication that we'll have to treat separately. So I'm back with a brief addendum that I forgot to mention a minute earlier. So we've seen that if we take a wave function like this and anti-symmetrize it, that process results in some wave function that looks like the original thing that we had written down minus, to make it anti-symmetric, the version uh, of the original function with the two electrons exchanged. So that's called an anti-symmetrized product. We also briefly discussed a symmetrized uh, a combination. So we might also wonder why it is that we can't put both of the electrons in a helium atom in the spin up orbital. First electron spin up in a 1s orbital. Second electron also spin up in a 1s orbital. Turns out the reason we can't do that is because when we anti-symmetrize that particular trial orbital, what we get is the first thing we wrote down, 1s alpha 1, 1s alpha 2, minus the anti-symmetrized, uh, the exchange version, which would be 1s alpha uh, 2, 1s alpha 1. So all I've done here is I've exchanged the 1 and the 2 to make this anti-symmetrized combination. And notice that 1s alpha 1, 1s alpha 2 is the same thing as 1s alpha 1, 1s alpha 2. And when I subtract them from each other, what I get is zero. So it turns out when you take a wave function that has both electrons in exactly the same spin orbital, both in the same spatial and the spin orbital as each other, when you anti-symmetrize them, they cancel each other out and you get zero. So that wave function uh, uh, doesn't exist. So this is the reason for what we have heard of before is the Pauli exclusion principle. that we can't have two electrons in the same orbital. We can't have both electron and one and electron two in the 1s spin up orbital. Or a different way of saying that is every spatial orbital, like a 1s orbital, can only have uh, two electrons in it the 1s orbital has room for a spin up alpha and a spin down beta electron. But once we've put those two in, uh, 
then that electron's full, and then if we try to put an additional one into the alpha or into the beta, then we'll run into the same type of problem. So the Pauli exclusion principle is a way of saying that the anti-symmetry prevents us from having more than two electrons in any uh, individual spin orbital or more than two different spins in any spatial orbital.